No one else comes close to having the amount of historical evidence as Yahusha does. This leads to the discussion of other researchers, atheists, who have been converted just from their own research. True and honest research will always produce this fruit. Take for example the well-known investigative journalist and writer Lee Strobel. In 1980, Lee set out to prove once and for all that the claims of the Messiah and the Bible were not true. His disdain for faith was tested when his wife was converted to Christianity. This inspired him to dig very deeply. After interviewing numerous biblical scholars, doctors, psychologists, and more, he had to conclude that his findings were incontrovertible. Lee was converted through his attempts to disprove the biblical accounts. He ended up writing a book and subsequently a movie was made called A Case for Christ, which earned high rating scores with a box office success. I encourage all seekers to view it. The Iliad is an ancient collection of writings which the Greeks considered their Bible for some time and some say originally composed around 800 BC. There are 1,500 remaining copies of these manuscripts, and some date back to the 3rd century. Impressive so it may seem, the New Testament has more than 5,800 copies of Greek manuscripts, and copies are still being discovered to this day. The earliest known copy of the Iliad is separated from the original by 1,100 years compare that to the earliest copy of the New Testament being only 30 years from the original. As for documentation, no other ancient manuscript matches the overwhelming existence of physical copies and authentication so close to its original source. Plato's tetralogies have only seven copies and Aristotle's work have no more than five copies. Please, truly consider these matters for just a few moments. A huge misnomer in regard to the scriptures is that they were written by unlearned, sheep-herding, nomadic men and therefore cannot be trusted. While we don't have the educational background on every writer of the scriptures, we do have a few examples. Moses, the author of the first five books of the scriptures, known as the Torah, was highly educated by the Egyptians, who were the world power at that time. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. We also see Daniel, another prophet found in the scriptures, was also trained by the world power in his time. When referencing Daniel and his three other kinsmen that were taken from Jerusalem to Babylon, this was said of them, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. These words don't hold true to the commonly held view that biblical writers were unlearned. Taking a step further, much of the scriptures contain the historical details about the military endeavors, kingship, and fate of the people of Israel. The task of scribing this information wouldn't be handed down to the town fool, but to one educated and fully trained. Truly, the claim that these books were written by ignorant men is all smoke and mirrors set to detract the gullible from seeking wisdom contained within the scriptures. Living in these modern times, it's easy to slip away and believe what man says. After all, why would they be teaching us anything false in school? Everyone has our best interest at heart, right? Unfortunately, this is the furthest from the truth. And quite frankly, in this time in history, it should be evident to see. As I read through The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin, I couldn't help but look at his travels from a bird's eye view. What I witnessed was a man with great curiosity, looking into the vastness of wildlife and drawing his own conclusions. In fact, even Darwin himself had doubts about his theory. The eye to this day gives me a cold shudder, meaning that he couldn't explain the majesty and complexity of the eye itself, and that in speaking about his findings, called it grievously hypothetical. Discussing fully the theory of evolution honestly would take its own documentary to explore all the details, as there are many points to cover. However, one must realize and recognize that the theory of evolution doesn't even follow the scientific method. 
as this practice requires observable and testable information. To look at a fossil or geology and to label something millions or even billions of years old is all based off assumption, which is what the whole theory hangs on. Let me repeat this. The whole theory of evolution hangs on the coattails of a man who questioned his own theory. So with this in mind, why did the school systems worldwide adopt this as absolute truth? Well, in all honesty, I challenge you, the listener, to search this answer out for yourself. Ask questions. Why do a handful of families own 80% of the world's wealth? Why are these same people in charge of most political organizations? Why do they own nearly all media outlets and medical facilities and even jails, alongside being the very same people who took over the education system? This will be the tip of the iceberg of information, but will lead you to this fact. They are attempting to hide the truth of God on purpose. When speaking with a friend of mine, Dr. Pigeon, on the subject, I did thoroughly enjoy the question he posed. How many times can you take concrete, water, wood, tiles, roofing materials, windows, etc., and put them into a B-52 how many times can you drop them from the air and to form a house? The answer is never. No number of times will it ever form a house. We can apply the same logic to the theory of evolution. The truth is, with the complexity of this world and the life contained within, we have a creator. One last note. While reading through an academic journal located in my old college database, I found this quote to be quite interesting coming from the Darwin camp. I think we are all okay with entertaining the idea that if a more scientifically accurate way of explaining the diversity of life on Earth comes along, Darwin would be ousted. Isn't this telling? They would be so quick to jump on the next thought, as long as it doesn't involve giving the God of the Bible credit.